This is our last part in the series of explaining the meaning of the two justifications of faith. Among the matters our dear Prophet told us about is the belief in Allah's angels. It is obligatory to believe in the angels, that is to believe that they exist. Their bodies which Allah created from light, they are neither males nor females. They do not eat or drink. They are never disobedient to Allah. They always obey His orders. Note that the devil Satan is not an angel, for he objected to Allah, and by that he became a blasphemer, a kafir. He is among the jinn, because as we said, the angels do not disobey Allah. We have to believe in the messengers of Allah. It is an obligation to believe in all the prophets, those of whom we know and those of whom we do not know. They were numerous. The first of the prophets was Adam السلام, The last was our prophet Muhammad Some of them were prophets and messengers, and others were prophets but not messengers. The prophet who is a messenger is one to whom Allah revealed the new laws differing from the laws of the messenger before him. The prophet who was not a messenger also received the revelation from Allah in which he was ordered to follow the laws of the messenger before him. Both, however, the prophets and the messengers were ordered to convey the message. We have to believe in the revealed books. They are 104. The most famous are four, the Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, and the Quran. The Torah was revealed to Prophet Musa, the Zabur to Prophet Dawood, the Injil to Prophet Isa, and the Qur'an to Prophet Muhammad. However, later on the Torah and the Injil were changed by blasphemers. Hence today the original Torah and Injil do not exist anymore. As to the book of Al-Qur'an, it will not be altered, for it was mentioned that it will be protected from that. We have to believe in destiny, Qadr, both good and evil. The Arabic term Qadr can mean destiny and it can mean destiny. It is obligatory to believe that everything that happens in this universe happens according to the will of Allah, by the creating of Allah and by the destiny Qadr of Allah. Destiny when used to mean the eternal attribute of Allah means Allah's managing things and making them occur in accordance with His eternal will and knowledge. In other words, it is making things the way they are. It is not permissible to say about the destiny of Allah, which is the attribute of His self, that some is good and some other is evil. Rather, the destiny of Allah is good. However, when we said we have to believe in destiny, both what is good and what is evil, refers here to the created thing and not to the destiny of Allah, which is an attribute of Allah. Hence it refers to that which happens according to the destiny of Allah. This is why it is divided into what is good and what is evil, because the created things, some of them are good and some of them are evil. We also have to believe 
that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the last of the Prophets and the best of all the children of Adam. Although Prophet Isa will descend from the sky before the Day of Judgment, but he received the revelation of prophethood before Prophet Muhammad, and when he descends, he will rule with the laws of Prophet Muhammad. Anyone who claims that a person may be revealed to as a prophet after Prophet Muhammad is a blasphemer, for this would be contradicting a Qur'an. Muslims believe that Prophet Isa was not crucified, as was mentioned in the Qur'an. Rather, he was raised to the second sky where he is today, and he will return to earth before the Day of Judgment. One of the followers of Prophet Isa, that is, he was a believer, is the one who died on the cross, after Allah made his looks similar to that of Prophet Isa. Hence the blasphemers who wanted to kill Prophet Isa took this man and killed him thinking he was Prophet Isa. Moreover, we have to believe that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the best of all the Prophets. After him in status are Prophets Ibrahim, then Musa, then Isa, and then Nuh. Furthermore, it is obligatory to believe that every Prophet of Allah must be attributed with truthfulness, trustworthiness, and intelligence. This means that every Prophet of Allah is truthful. They do not even say one single lie, whether before or after prophethood. The Prophets are the most intelligent of all the creation. Consequently, lying, dishonesty, vileness, stupidity and dullness, cowardice and all qualities that repel others from accepting the call from them are impossible to be among their attributes. Hence the Prophets of Allah are clear of repulsive attributes which detract others from them, whether in their manners or in their bodies. They are clear of all diseases which disgust others. From this we know firmly that what some falsely claim that worms came out of the body of Prophet Ayyub is not true. Prophets must also be attributed with impeccability. That is, they are protected from ever committing blasphemy, kufr, enormous sins, and the small abject sins, before and after prophethood. No prophet of Allah ever committed blasphemy, neither before nor after prophethood. What some claim about Prophet Ibrahim, that at one point in time he worshipped the star, then the moon, then the sun, is a total fabrication. Prophet Ibrahim never worshipped other than Allah. When Prophet Ibrahim said, Hada Rabbi, referring to the sun, moon, and star, he was not stating his agreement with his people in worshipping those things. Rather, his statement was to negate and oppose what they said. This is a form of expression in Arabic called negative interrogative, a way of expressing one's strong denial of the matter by posing a question which clearly shows that the matter is ridiculous or totally unacceptable. Likewise, prophets are protected from committing enormous sins, both before and after prophethood. Hence, one should also not believe what some claim that Prophet Yusuf wanted to fornicate with the woman of Al-Aziz. This is a mean act and is non-befitting of a prophet. As to the verse mentioned in Al-Qur'an, it means that the woman attempted to commit adultery with Prophet Yusuf and that he did not attempt in the first place because Allah protected him by having eternally chosen him for the status of prophethood. Looking lustfully at a marriageable woman is a matter that prophets do not commit, let alone committing the sin of attempting fornication. Prophets are also protected from committing small mean sins, like stealing a morsel of bread or stealing a single grape. These are small sins, but they reflect certain meanness. Prophets do not commit such sins before and after prophethood. From this we know that the sin of Prophet Adam was not an enormous sin. Rather, it was a small sin that does not include meanness, as was stated by the scholars. On the other hand, they may commit other small sins. However, they are immediately guided to repent before others imitate them. 
Hence, we know that prophethood was not bestowed upon the brothers of Prophet Yusuf, who, excluding Benjamin, committed the mean deeds mentioned in the Quran. The Asbaq are the descendants of Yusuf's brothers, who were chosen for prophethood. Yusuf's brothers, excluding Benjamin, wanted to kill Yusuf unjustly. They threw him in a well, then they sold him, claiming he was a slave. They also humiliated their father, Yaqub, who was a prophet, and this is blasphemy. Although later they repented from these sins, none of them received prophethood, because as we said, prophets do not commit such wrongdoings even before prophethood. And Allah Ta'ala knows best.